Hello, welcome back to The Interface. My name's Alex, and this is the infotainment guide for the brand new BYD Dolphin Surf, otherwise known as the BYD Seagull and Dolphin Mini in other markets. Now, we've actually got a really decent touchscreen on this car, actually. Um, it's the same sort of layout as BYD's larger models, like the Dolphin and the Seal. It's all condensed down in this tiny little screen, um, and it does rotate to portrait or landscape, if you want that kind of thing. So let's just do that quickly now. But we will do the rest of the video in landscape. Um, because, well, certain apps don't work in portrait. So much like other BYD models, if you've used those before, we've got a very familiar layout. So we've got these bubbles here. So we've got navigation, Spotify, uh, the radio itself. You can also swipe down from the top to get access to essentially a control center if you use an iPhone, but just all the short controls. So you can turn the screen off. You've got the energy shortcut, um, Bluetooth, wireless internet, so WLAN, brightness for the screen, got the volume level, while it's charging, and you can also customize this whole screen. Um, so you can go in there and do what you want. If you swipe up from the bottom, it's basically the apps you've used previously. So at the moment I've only opened the settings app, but you can delete them and quit them much like you do on Android. Um, in the top right -hand corner, you've got a few icons. You've got the um, sort of the pitch of the vehicle, or the angle the car's sitting at, um, either left or right or forward to back. Um, 4G signal for the vehicle itself. Um, volume is muted, Bluetooth and the location. Um, you've also got the date and time in the left-hand corner and a quick shortcut or some information about the speed limit warning. So that information is there. Along the bottom here, we've got a button to rotate the screen. We've got the split view mode, um, much like other BYD models, they support a split screen view. A shortcut to the climate, so you can do the uh, fan speed there. We've got air recirculation, the direction the air is going to go in. Uh, a shortcut to the settings. The temperature of the vehicle, what's important to note is the Dolphin Surf does not have traditional climate control or modern climate control. So you can't set a temperature and the vehicle will reach it. This is simply a, a number based system like vehicles of old. Um, so you've got um, basically one through eight, I believe. Yeah, one here and then eight at the very top or 17 actually um, for full heat. So just bear that in mind as well. And then the home button here and also a back button as well. You can also do things like say, hi BYD. What's up? Open the driver's window. I'm not able to control windows. So that is one thing that's missing on the Dolphin Surf. Um, it can't actually open the windows for some strange reason, much like the, the larger uh, Dolphin and Seal. Hi BYD, what can you do? What's up? Here are some commands you can try. So you can do things like um, navigate to the hotel, navigate to destinations, nearby search, control the screen, um, the system operations as well. It's like volume control and vehicle control. So you can't um, open the windows with the, the voice control, but that's, that's pretty much okay, I think. So let's go through all the apps on the Dolphin Surf one by one and see what we've got. So we'll ignore these three here because they are all located on these two screens here. Um, the first one is the BYD Assistant, which we just looked at. That tells you what the Assistant can actually do for you and all the controls you can do. Got the phone. So I don't have a phone connected to the Dolphin Surf currently, but you can connect a phone via Bluetooth. You can then dial out, you look at your contacts and look at your missed calls as well. Navigation. Now I'm quite impressed with the um, sort of the graphics response on this vehicle. You can see here it responds really, really quickly to my touch. Um, pinch to zoom is also incredibly responsive. Um, and it's got Google Maps built in by the look of things. Um, so, well, there's potentially Google Maps point of interest icons actually. So if I search for Big Ben, as we are in London, let's see how long it actually takes to get there. Let's have a quick look here. So Big Ben, London, six miles away, probably going to take 25 years to get there. <laughs> um, yeah, so you've got Google reviews here. Um, it takes nearly an hour to do nine miles. Um, and it tells you what battery level you're actually going to get there with. So I'd imagine it's using um, Google's uh, built-in uh, EV range calculator to work out how long, how much battery you're going to have to get there. So this, to me, is a lot better than the other BYD models they've got out because it's got Google Maps built in along with photographs. So that's quite nice. One test I'm going to quickly do is to set a destination that's too far away for the vehicle. So I've got 168 miles of range here. And yes, it is actually doing it properly. So it's going to suggest I'm going to run out of battery in Leeds. So let's say plan charges. Let's have a quick look here. Yes, that's really good. So it's suggesting expensive ones, but it's actually suggesting places to go and how long to be there for. Um, so a 40 minute charge in Crewe and then a 20 minute charge in Carlisle and you'll get there with 10%. That's really good, actually. I'm quite impressed with how that how that works. That's very similar to a Tesla. So two charging, 
two charging locations, 404 miles, an hour of charging, because this little car doesn't charge that quickly. But that's, yeah, that's really, really good effort on that BYD, so really, really good. Apart from telling you where to charge, because um, we do have Google Maps built in here, there are quite a lot of things you can actually look for. So charging stations, um, got Source London and that sort of stuff, along with their reviews. Have a quick look for restaurants or something. So look at coffee shops. So again, you know if it's a good place to go there because it's got Google Maps um, ratings built in and the opening hours should at least be accurate because again, it's, it's based on Google Maps. So it's pretty good. Very, very impressive there. Um, nice replacement for maybe um, uh, Android Auto or something along those lines if you haven't got a phone with you. So pretty good. Um, got built in Spotify. So you have to log in to use that. So I'm not going to demonstrate that here. Um, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Pretty self-explanatory there. Um, Media Center. So let's have a quick look here. So this is the built-in radio. Um, this car has got built-in DAB and also built-in FM and AM, as well as um, local music files. So there is a, a micro SD card slot down here. So you can look at files off the vehicle. You can look at files off your USB drive, uh, local to the vehicle. So you can actually upload files to the car itself. We have got video files. Again, you can watch those if you want to off various different sources and audio. Um, these are all the audio settings, which we'll go through in a bit. Vehicle image. So this particular one I'm driving has got a 360 degree camera system and it works really well. Um, lots of different views here. So we've got the side view, so look at the wheels when they turn. I've got the that side view, front view, back view. And for the price point of this car, some really, really nicely um, laid out camera system views, really high res screen as well. Um, so that's quite impressive. And also a pass through mode as well and a 3D view of the vehicle. So um, it isn't actually the, the color that I'm driving, but it is at least, that's a pretty high-end feature that a lot of cars don't actually have. So that's quite impressive. We've also got some theme options as well. So you've got some options in here. The language is a bit strange. Um, the one that you've currently got, it's got the word applying there, which makes it seem like it's actually doing something, um, but that actually means the one you're currently using. So a bit of a language translation issue there, um, but there are some other options in here. So we go back here and have a look at this one. Uh, we are currently in dark mode, but there is a, a light mode as well, if you want that as well. And you can also choose some different wallpapers. So you've got um, number one, for example, and you can choose um, the look and feel of the whole interior here. So that's quite nice there. Got utility tools, you've got file manager. So you can browse the file system on the car because this um, OS is based on Android. There are some things you can look at like ringtones and, and podcasts and things there. Uh, we've got disable auto start option there. So you can say these apps shouldn't open when you launch the vehicle or start the vehicle. Uh, and lastly, we've got data monitor. So this vehicle has got a, a SIM card and you can use that to um, get online and do that sort of stuff there. It tells you how much data you've got left and potentially what you've actually used. Got album here, so you can look at the files. You've got storage and transmission information. Do not show this again. And you can look at files that are on the vehicle. Got settings now. So let's go through all these options here. So at the very, very top, we have got light. So you've got exterior lights. So you can turn on and off the daytime running lights. You can adjust the um, the headlight height. Um, so if you're in a different country or um, you just need to adjust them a bit differently, you can do that as well. And you have got an option for um, IHBC or intelligent high beam control. Um, that will basically um, adjust the high beam based on what side of the vehicle someone's on um, and give you a, a nice sort of idea of what's going on. Uh, we've also got courtesy lights, so you can say intelligent courtesy light, and there's a delay when you lock the vehicle. How long do you want those lights to be on for? Um, so you've got the option of um, it's in 10 second increments, so all the way up to 60 seconds if you want that as well. By default, it's on 10 seconds. Got some lock options here. So uh, we'll look at this one. We've got password to drive, auto lock when driving, and there is a digital key option. So the Dolphin Surf is quite unique um, because of the price point of the vehicle. Um, it's quite impressive to see we've actually got support for Apple Car Key, which means you can use your Apple Watch or your iPhone to unlock the vehicle, touching the NFC reader on the driver's door mirror. Um, really nice option, um, and it's quite nice to see an affordable car have this kind of thing, because most vehicles that have it are quite expensive. Uh, we've got window controls here, so it says long press key fob to unlock and open windows, long press inching switch to lock and close windows, and long press inching switch to unlock and open windows. Um, the inching switch on the vehicle is the one that's got the, the little um, uh, circle logo on it. Also got audio display. So we've got instrument ideas here. You've got brightness. So um, range is either going to be standard or dynamic. 
um, some different options there. One is one is rated to WLTP and one is dynamic based on how you drive the vehicle. Got the screen option here. So you've got um, center brightness screen. So you've got the adjustment there. You can turn off adaptive, adaptive brightness or turn it on if you want to. Uh, you've got some different screen saver options there. So clock one, clock two or clock three. Uh, mode is dark, light, or auto. I'm going to switch to light mode for the rest of the video now. And um, we've also got the notifications. So safety alert broadcast is on or off. No idea what that actually does. It doesn't actually say what that does. I actually said broadcast content. Um, alert when vehicle power on or power off fails. There's all sorts of different alerts in there about low key power and that sort of stuff there. Vehicle prompt sound is brand or standard. Uh, one is like a sort of a musical jingle for the brand one and the standard one is just a normal sound. And you can also play um, the AVAS sound source as well. Speed warning is off by default and media volume decreases when navigating. So when the sat-nav voice plays something, you can have the media sort of dim itself if you want that as well. Audio settings, so we've got loudness turned on. Equalizer is custom, um, pretty much full bass. I'm gonna reset the back to factory settings. <laughs> and sound field balance, so you can customize where in the vehicle that's going to be. Um, it is simply left or right. Um, there are possibly not any speakers in the back, but I will put some information on the screen if there are any speakers in the back. Um, but just judging by this, I don't think there are. Uh, you've got media volume one, phone volume is maximum, uh, voice volume and broadcast volume as well. Energy, so region is on high, there is a standard mode as well. Charge and discharge, you've got smart charging here. So you can schedule the charging schedule that the car takes place with, uh, so on or off, and you can set a time and date for that if you want to. You've got charging port immobilizer system, enabled or disabled, and it says unlock the vehicle before manually pressing the charger lock button to pull out the charger. Um, you might want to enable that if you're charging in public uh, overnight or somewhere, um, just so no one nicks Nixie cable or something along those lines. And also you can customize the AC charging current limit in amps. Currently it's on max. Energy consumption as well, um, it is displayed in a relatively easy to use format. Um, the vehicle's done 262.3 miles since, it's, since it was made. Um, it's averaged 4.6 kilowatt hours per 100 miles. And my screen here is suggesting 4.6 miles per kilowatt hour as well, which is pretty decent. Um, some driving information and driving uh, time. And also there is some average electricity consumption. So it says 12.5 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. I will put those conversions on screen because there's lots and lots of stuff going on here in terms of formats. We've also got vehicle here. So you can set the heating for the seats and we've got heated seats on both the driver and passenger. And we've also got a heated rear windscreen and side mirror heating on this comfort trim. Go back a page here. We've got AC controls. So you've got remote AC schedule, 10, 15, 20, 25, or 30 minutes. And also auto internal circulation upon parking. So that'll probably just get rid of all the bad smells after you've left the vehicle. And auto fan speed reduction during Bluetooth phone calls. Driving control, so you've got the um, steering assist mode is either comfort or sport. We've got comfort parking, brake assist mode, comfort or sports, and electric electronic parking brake trailer mode, and you can also turn off the ESC or the traction control. You've got comfort driving, so auto power on, auto power off, auto fold for the mirrors, and auto wipers. Cabin perception, so there is a little camera here that monitors you essentially, and if you're driving too tired, and you can turn that system off if you want to. Service, you've got intelligent maintenance, um, mileage and intervals, and also the uh, overhaul, so front wiper check, and a digital manual as well. ADAS, so we've got intelligent cruise control, let's have a quick look in here. So ICC, uh, keep the vehicle centered in the lane on the motorway. Um, it says it might not work with adverse weather conditions. Safety assist, so you've got assist mode for lane departure assist is either off, warning, prevention, or both. And the alert mode is either sound, vibration, or both. You've got a collision avoidance assist, so AEB, or automatic emergency braking, is either on or off. Forward collision warning, off, late, moderate, or early. And we also do have traffic sign recognition, so that's on or off. And speed limit change prompt tone, on or off. Intelligent speed attention, um, so it's monitor, monitors real-time road speed and your driving speed you're currently going and should warn you about that. Um, intelligent speed limit control and TSR cellular data. Um, so it says it will consume some 
uh, data on your SIM card to um, work out what the speed limit actually is. Uh, parking assist, you can turn the parking sensors on or off if you want to. And very lastly in the settings app is system. Uh, so you've got options for Bluetooth, uh, wireless or Wi-Fi. You can turn the hotspot on or off so you can use the SIM card built into the car. Uh, connected devices, so you can look at phones that are connected. Uh, you can turn on cellular data. Uh, remote control is enabled, so you can say, yes, you can use the app to turn on the AC um, remotely if you want to as well. General, so you can say automatic time sync, uh, time zones, time formats, languages, so lots of options in here for loads of different languages. This car's sold in. Android keyboard, memory playback, so it says resume playback from where left off. Um, this supports radio, local media, and other third-party sources. Apps, so some Android stuff in here like storage and pri privacy. Contact us, so it should give you a phone number in here. Yep, so you've got a phone number for the roadside assistance and also an email address for their customer service. And agreement and statements, I'm not going to go for this because that is pretty boring. Uh, and then version, so it says version updates on 13.1. Um, some other version numbers in there. Uh, it says checking the software version information. I doubt there's any updates for it because this is a very, very new car. No. And then version details as well. So it tells you everything about the vehicle. And then you can also factory reset the entire car and factory set the whole infotainment screen. On the last page, we have three things. We've got smart charging. So again, we've looked at that previously. The digital manual, basically an entire interactive manual for the car about how to use the entire system. So if you're bored charging somewhere, you can learn how to use your car. Lots of nice options in there. And lastly, the BYD store. Um, so let's press OK on this one. And there are various apps you can download, like Amazon Music, which is good to see, Zoom as well, uh, BYD Arcade, uh, YouTube, let's download that. And it says it supports a rotating screen. There's a web browser, and that's pretty much it, really. And also Stingray and Calm Radio. So let's install the YouTube app and see what we can see on there. So unfortunately, you can only use YouTube while the Wi-Fi is connected. So unfortunate with that one. Um, hopefully, BYD add Apple Music support. Um, hopefully, they add um, sort of uh, uh, YouTube Music and all those sort of options in there. So that'd be quite nice to see one day. Lastly, we're going to look at the app now um, for iPhone. So I have got my phone connected to the BYD app. So let's quickly go through those details now. So let's go through the BYD app. So it's a nicely laid out system very similar to a um, sort of a Kia or Genesis app actually. Um, and there's lots of nice options in here. So you can pull down to refresh the settings and it tells you at the top there when it was last updated. Unfortunately, the color of the vehicle is not synced across. This one is that lovely lime green color, which looks really funky. Um, and you can do various things. So you can lock the doors, you can unlock them. You can flash the headlights if you want to. This button here, so let's type in our password, which is super secure. And you can, you can beep the horn. Um, you can also set the fan speed, you can um, check the doors and windows, so you can see the the front hood is closed, the rear trunk's closed, but the doors are closed but not locked. Uh, seats is not activated, but you can turn on the heated seats if you want to there. And also, uh, vehicle position, so you can see where the car is in relation to where you are. Um, relatively accurate, it says it's 70 metres away, and you can then you can, fl I'm not going to do it again, but you can actually beep the horn remotely, so if you lose the car in the car park, which the colour of this is, you might not actually lose it, uh, but you can make it beep remotely if you want to. Um, there's also some services here, so you can see where the nearest BYD dealers are. Customer support, and also you can manage your digital keys. So I've got my phone connected as a digital key, and also my Apple Watch as well. More functions here, there isn't any more at all. Uh, that's pretty much it, really. Um, you can look at your account, so the VIN number for the vehicle, how many miles the car's done, you can check your current um, account and security, contact BYD, and there are some settings here. Uh, you can also receive messages here, so when the charge starts and, one, and whatnot, and uh, remote control verification, so use Face ID instead of a password, and alert sounds, and also... Um, client service options so you can say I want emails about everything. So that's been a look at the infotainment system on the brand new BYD Dolphin Surf in the UK. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. My name's Alex, please subscribe to Interface Cars and I'll see you again next time.